Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sasquad Trail Runners Run Venture series, our Facebook Live series. My name is Kim Levinsky. I'm the owner and race director for Sasquad Trail Runners in New Jersey. Tonight, we are joined by my very good friend, Tony Roosh, who is off to the side. She's going to join us in a couple of minutes. We're going to be talking all about her first ever 50K that she completed this past weekend as a solo self-supported run venture. So before we get Tony her squatchy introduction, I'm going to share a few updates on what is happening in the wonderful world of Sasquad trail running. So our next trail party is coming up at the end of June. It's on June 27th at the Burlington County Fairgrounds. This is called the Midnight Palooza. So you can join us at midnight to run or hike for 12 hours, six hours, three hours, or a 5K. You can sign up for that on ultrasignup.com. Again, it's called the Midnight Palooza. After that, we're going to the South Mountain Reservation in Milburn, New Jersey for the Fat Sass Switchback Challenge. This is a Sasquad original race we've been doing since we started back in 2018. This is a very unique course. It's a one mile loop that climbs up 300 feet and then descends 300 feet all within the course of a mile. So you can complete the loops as many times as you can in six hours, three hours, or you can do just three loops for a 5K. I am so excited, excited to share tonight that we have the official, official approval for our first ever trail party in New York. So we are heading up to Harriman State Park in Tuxedo, New York on Saturday, July 31st for a trail half marathon. So get that on your calendar. We are co-hosting this race with our friends at the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference. And this event is gonna be raising funds for their current project to rebuild the historic Ramapo Dunderberg Trail. If you didn't know, that was actually the first trail that they helped build um, over 100 years ago. So registration for that will open up tomorrow on ultrasignup.com. Um, our next Facebook interview will be on Sunday, June 6th. The tables will turn and I will be in the hot seat talking about my recent adventure at the Grand Canyon doing rim to rim to rim. My friend Kaylin Hopkins will be doing the interview and if you remember last year I interviewed Kaylin about her rim to rim to rim. So we thought it would only be fitting if the tables were turned and she's asking me about my trip because she was uh, one of the main inspirations for me going out there. Then on June 16th, we're going to sit down with the amazing Stephanie Langner. I just confirmed that with her this afternoon. She's going to be sharing all about her upcoming through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail, the PCT. That's happening at the end of June. So we actually have it planned out. We're going to interview her on June 16th. And then we'll give her a week or two after she gets back from her trip. We'll follow up and have another sit down with her to hear all about her adventures on the PCT. So to learn more about the rest of our events for 2021, you can check them all out on our website, which is sasquadtrailrunning.com. So that about wraps it up for the Sasquad updates right now. So the reason you are all here, Tony enters in. <laughs> we'll get all set up hello. here. Hello, hello. I'm going to give Tony a little introduction. So I know Tony literally my entire life. Mm -hmm. Yep. We grew up in the same church together. Uh, recently, in the last few years, we've reconnected. I moved back to New Jersey in 2016, and I have had the privilege of having a front row seat to Tony's trail running journey, which mm -hmm. started a few years ago. Um, and I have to say, that I've already told her this, there are not enough words to express how happy and just proud I am of your 50K that you did on Sunday. So that's what we're going to be chatting about tonight. But along the way, we're going to hear all about her other... Um, accomplishments on and off the trail. It's going to go all the way back. We're going to hear about the Von Trapp Half Marathon that we did together, the Feb Apple 20, and uh, very excited to hear about the Grand Circle Trail Fest, which yes. we did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're here all about that. And a um, little more background. Tony is uh, a wife and mother to uh, Carter James is 23 months. I want to make sure in my notes I had the age right. 23 months. <laughs> yeah. Carter is extremely active <laughs> a monster he's okay I love him. monster a little bit monster so he keeps tony and their husband her husband greg on their toes uh she is a full-time police dispatcher putting in 12-hour shifts to keep us all safe she has the best stories from her dispatching job we might hear some of those tonight hey. so anyway without further ado let's jump into this 
Tony, Hello. thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. I appreciate I'm you very being happy here. To be here. I'm going to set this up on my phone. Give me a second. I'm going to open this so I can see any comments that we might have along the way. Okay. All right. So we got a few people watching us. <laughs> Tony, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I had to twist your arm a little bit. A little. A little. I don't know what was more nerve wracking, running fifty, <laughs> running a fifty k, or being on camera. But yes, you got me here. We, we're here, and yeah, we're here live in the Squatch Studio. So welcome. Um, I do want to. Delilah's here. Yeah, so. we'll point out here the cat. Let's see, she's up there, being extra judgy. I don't even think she's watching. So. She doesn't like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, Tony, let's let's get your background. Fill us in on. Um, your running story. So okay. tell us about that. You can talk about your childhood a little bit. If you have any background with sports, how did you, but the, the question is, how did you get into running? I think my lack of sports is what's funny about it, but I did <laughs> not play any sports at all growing up. Um, just not a big sports family, anything like that. Um, I was more on the academic, I guess, side of things. Um, but I ran, I actually remember in, um, in high school, one of our good friends, Jess, uh, my girl got me to run with her, and that was the first time I threw up in the street running. So <laughs> I have had a uh, love-hate relationship with running mm, for a shout out, very long time. Shout out to Jess. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> um, I started my first sport ever in college. I started um, rowing. So I rowed for about a year and a half, and then I became the coxswain for the team which was very exciting. And what is, um, what is a coxswain for those so who don't know? So you are the leader of the, or you're not the leader, but the, um, you're basically like steering the boat and you're yelling out all the instructions for the rowers and everything. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of keeping the time and you're the, you're the thinker for the race because the other rowers are unable to think, they're rowing their hearts out. Right. So you're just pushing them along. Uh, that was very, very fun. I really liked that a lot. And, um, where did you go to school? I went to Liberty University. Okay. That's down in Virginia. Uh -huh. um, and I think if you ask anyone that I was on that team with that I would be running still to this day, I think they would all laugh because oh, I was kind man. of like the butt of all jokes that like I always hated running. Mm. I don't really think anyone probably wanted to be on any of our uh, team building teams if there was running involved <laughs> in, uh, with me on there. But I made it through, and uh, my I remember my coach there was just, like he basically starting from scratch, like teaching mm. me you know, workouts and all that, yeah. all that stuff. So it was a, a fun experience, but I started to try to run a little bit here and there, but I definitely did not like it at all. And I was always adamant about how much I hated running right. all through college. And then, um, I moved home back to New Jersey. Um, with, uh, I moved in with my parents when I came home. That was 2012. Uh -huh. Um, and I would kind of run here and there. I'm more like walking, I guess. Right. And then uh, I would do the occasional friendly like 5K. I was never able to complete like a 5K race running straight through. Mm -hmm. So that was actually one of my recent goals. I wanted to be able to run a 5K without stopping on right. the road. Right. Um, so I would do like fun runs. I've done like a few like those mud races and OCR races and yeah. things like that. So, um, and then in 2016, when you moved home from Ohio, uh, you and your sister Debbie, who I'm very good friends with, were kind of like, let's like keep come on the trails with us, like come trail running. And I was like, I don't even know what trail running yes. is. It sounds <laughs> like I will trip. <laughs> But um, you got me to go one morning, and I couldn't even tell you. I think we ran at South Mountain okay. Reservation. Uh -huh. I was, like, very blur of what happened because I was just trying not to fall the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I liked it. I liked being outside. I like hikes. So I was like, hey, this was actually pretty mm -hmm. cool. And I don't really like running with people just because I'm very self-conscious usually about, like, how slow I am or if I need to walk and things like that. Mm -hmm. And... I can say for certain that you are the most encouraging person Aww. to run with because you definitely got me to just, you know, it doesn't matter. Just come. Right. Like, and if you need to walk, we'll walk. It's okay. Mm. Like, nobody's going to be left behind. We're just going to go run. Let's just go run. Go run. Right. So um, I started running um, with you and Debbie. And, well, then Debbie went back to Florida. Um, and I started liking the trails more and more. And I would go out and try to, you, like, taught me more about, like, how to follow different trails, too. Like, I kind of... I had done, like, hikes and stuff like that, but I didn't really understand, or 
I would never really go out on my own. Okay. Then I started venturing out on my own a little bit more. Uh, and then I remember in the summer of, was it 2017? Yeah. You had sent a text in our little group text, and you're like, I just found a half marathon. <laughs> and it's at the lodge for where, um, the people for Sound of Music. And yes. We love musicals. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love the Sound so of Music. So that's how she got me, because she knows I love musicals. I can tell you, this is how much. There was a lot of this going on in the car <laughs> on the way up to uh, Vermont. <coughs> so me, Kim, and Debbie, we, uh, we piled into my little Cobalt, and yes. we drove up to uh, Vermont. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember when I signed up for it, my family was kind of like, yeah, you're not going to be able to run a half marathon. Like, that's like 13 miles. Mm. You know, like, it's kind of a big, kind of a step. You right, know, you, you, right. Can't, you can't even run a 5K. Like, why would you do that? Right. And uh, you're very supportive of everyone that knows Kim. Is, you're the most encouraging right. person ever. So you helped me. You're like, no, no, no. Like, it'll be great. We'll start, like, very small. She wrote out a whole plan for me. And I was like... I want to go because it's the sound of music. Like, yes. Let's go. It's on a mountain. Like, the Bond Drop. Yeah, it was literally up a mountain. It was probably the one of the hardest five half marathons that I probably yeah. could have picked for the first one. It was one, literally but, like not like crawling yeah. up the mountain at the top. But um, that was a lot of fun. Mm. And I remember I actually like was very dedicated to like the training plan. I'd never done anything like that before where I was like, you know, these, this is, like, what I, I have to stick to this. I have to do the different miles. Mm-hmm. I even used vacation time for work at some point. Yeah, to like I remember that. in the morning and I go that. in late. Right. Um, so it kind of definitely got me to fall in love more with the trails. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of seeing, like, I remember the first time I ran, like, six miles. I was like, oh, my God, I just yeah. ran six <laughs> miles. Like, that was crazy. Um, and then after that, I'd be like, I just ran nine miles. Right. I can't believe it. And every milestone, I was just like, I can't believe I ran that far. I can't mm-hmm. believe I ran that far. I can't believe I completed that. Right. Um, so to do that first half marathon, that was very, very exciting and empowering mm-hmm. and just so encouraging to have yes. you and Debbie there. And just, it was on that runner's high when we were done that I that you made me. No. Did I? Yeah, I encouraged you. <laughs> you encouraged me to um, to sign up for the Feb Apple 20 miler. Mm-hmm. And you were like, if you can do 13 miles up a mountain, you could do 20 miles. Like, you definitely can do it. <laughs> so we ran through the winter. It was very cold, snowy, mm-hmm. but, like, I got all my, like, snow gear, all that stuff. Um, and, and we did it. And Elaine. Uh, yeah was also part of that. She Elaine ran with it. Yep. Yep. Hi, Elaine, if you're, if you're watching. Uh, that was so much fun, and we had a good group, and um, I was doing core with you, too, your core mm-hmm. group. My schedule allowed it more than without a baby to, uh, <laughs> to be able to attend that, so we had, like, a really fun group there of supportive people, and we would go on different runs here and there, and mm-hmm. we made that Feb Apple work, and I couldn't believe that I did that either. Yes. So every uh, every step along the way, I've been learning more more things that it's like, oh, I can't believe I did that. And I love the trail running community because it's so support. Everyone's so supportive of each other. Mm. And I don't ever feel uh, necessarily that I'm not doing, like, good enough. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's fun to just like run because I like the trails and I want to be out there and I I would always say to anyone I'm like whatever bad trail run just turns into a nice hike and I like to hike so it doesn't matter right it would uh get me to go out and train more too because if I wanted to go out and you're you know there's some days where you're just sluggish and you're like I don't I don't want to run I just don't want to be here uh and then I would just walk and then ever a little bit sometimes I would feel the happiness enough to to run and uh continue that or I would just walk and right call it a day on that but um so you did the you did the feb apple Mm -hmm. and then how did you jump wait so the timeline you're right feb apple and then grand circle trail fest was next yes right yep so then I kind of took that was I guess 2000 17 and then that's when Sasquatch trail running kind of was like yes. taking off yes um you know like yeah like we might host like a race and we started like coming up with some things and that's when like so I think that first year of Sasquatch was like 
I was doing all like the races with you and all yes. that stuff and or like volunteering. I have um, to pause and I have to say, Tony was uh, she was an OG. Okay, Sasquad OG. <laughs> so she was one of the founding members helped <laughs> me get it all off the ground. Like you were there all the behind the scenes work. It would not have happened without you. So you, I always, uh, I always have to give credit. I love that awesome. I was able to see it from the start. Cause I think there was maybe like what, 25 people at the first one. And yeah. It was that like first, a lot of friends and right. family. Like we always just going to run. Like it right. was, uh, that was like the November. pre, the pre Sasquatch. It was, it wasn't right. even not uh, like officially founded yet. It was kind of right. like you wanted to get your feet wet with, uh, trying yeah. out like organizing, like an RDing a race. Right. We only lost a couple runners that day. Uh, I think, uh. A yeah. couple. They eventually came back. We got them. Yeah. <laughs> no one was injured. It doesn't matter. <laughs> now we keep track of everyone. Now everyone. Now we, Kim is now we up know. on top of things. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and then in that, um, I don't even know how, I think you you found the race. Mm -hmm. or, um, we found this thing and it was like vacation races. Yes. And we were like, that sounds fun. Yeah. Like, you get to go on vacation. <laughs> And run. Like, who wouldn't want to run on vacation? Yeah. Okay, so you got to explain to everybody, what is the Grand Circle Trail So Fest? we decided to sign up for the Grand Circle Trail Fest, uh, which was a three-day trail running festival. And it was in Utah. Um, Katab is the name of it? Um, uh, Kanab. Kanab, Kanab, I think. Kanab. Oh, it was in, yeah. It was, it was in Utah. It was in Utah, yeah. It yeah. was right, like, on the Utah-Arizona border um so the first day was going to be um at the oh my goodness i'm blanking on where it was the first day we were at bryce yes bryce canyon it was 13 miles at bryce canyon it was three half basically three half marathons back to back to back so the first day was at um they were all at national parks and we were kind of in the central location around them so every morning we had to get up and drive uh, or take a shuttle to the start of the race, and then uh, we camped <laughs> this, like, giant <laughs> campground. It was on a softball field, Yeah, it was, like, right? a, a random space. We were like, oh, yeah, you'll come camping, and all the tents were on softball fields. And yeah. We're like, this is kind of kind of camping. Kinda <laughs> not. You, like, hear, like, everyone else. Everybody, so yeah. if you were next to someone that snored, like, it was over. Right. I, that was my first time I got used to wearing ear earplugs. So I was like, I'm definitely going to need these. But, yep. <laughs> yeah, the first day was in Bryce Canyon, which I think was the most oh, beautiful place I've ever it was been. Or the most beautiful, at least the most beautiful run I've ever been on. Mm -hmm. um, it took so long, I think, <laughs> because we stopped every five seconds to take pictures. Five five hundred pictures, I would say. So easily. Many and like I love that we went into it because we were going like for the photo ops. Right. Basically. You we had a like, selfie stick. We did. I actually ran with a selfie <laughs> stick. I'm like, this is why we're here is to take pictures. Like you know there's people that like just run by right. you like I'm gonna win this. Like, right, yeah. We yeah. were not there to win. We didn't go to win. Right. We were not even close <laughs> to winning. I think they were packing up. We ran like, so we slow there. that the aid stations were packed up. <laughs> they were like we were like right on the cutoff times. Like we just every every five seconds we were stopping. Every corner that you turned yeah. you're like this is the most beautiful view. And right. then you would turn again and be like, No, this is the right. most beautiful view and every place that you turned it was it was amazing and right. breathtaking and um, that, that one had some pretty high elevation. I yeah. definitely felt like the elevation changed with that one. Right. Um, but we made it through. We did it. Mm -hmm. We finished. Uh, and then the next day was at Zion. Zion, yeah. Which was also beautiful. It was on a, like a mesa, mm -hmm. um, all around. And that one I think was also 13 miles. It was either like right under 13 mm -hmm. or around there. Um, another beautiful one and I was so scared that night that first night going to bed I was like I just ran 13 miles today like I don't know how I'm gonna run 13 miles yeah. tomorrow <laughs> and I was so tired like you can't even think about it you're like just go to bed and do it in the morning and that second day actually felt better to me than the first day because mm -hmm. I was just like I think I was so wired right. and that one was a little flatter yes than Bryce, Bryce, Bryce had the most elevation yeah game. Bryce was a rough one to start mm -hmm. with but um I was like you know what I, we had studied, like, the maps and everything before we went, and we were like, that was kind of, like, the worst one. Right. Elevation-wise. So to get that out of the way, I was like, okay, well, that one's done, so right. we can do anything now. 
Uh, Zion was also beautiful, um, mm. and we did the same thing, just a million photos, just yep. every every point that you can get, we're like, photos, photos, photos. Yep. I remember um, we asked the race director at the end, like, can we stage our finish? And remember we did our, like, pose at the finish line, and we, like... <laughs> we made shirts with, like, the pose that we were going to do <laughs> at each race. <laughs> um, yeah. So they, uh, but they loved it. I mean, they yeah. were like, yeah, sure, do, yeah, it. They like do it. whatever you want. Like, right. they, they love people taking photos and everything because then they get publicity from that. Exactly. But, and then the third day was supposed to be through, like, a slot canyon mm. at uh, near Horseshoe Bend right. at the, uh, Outside at, the, Grand at the Canyon. Yeah, the Grand Canyon National yeah. Park. Um, so we had to go after a lot of math to try to figure out the time changes of when we had to be. <laughs> that was at so the confusing. Start. We were so afraid that we were going to go to bed and wake up at the wrong time because right. we were right on the border of one of the time changes, right. and right. we're like, "Well, once we drive an hour that way, it's a different time." And we were very confused as yeah. to what time we had to be at this race, <laughs> but we made it. Um, and that one, because there was supposed to be flooding, they changed mm. the race course like the night before yes they were like by the way you're not going to be running through this like beautiful slot canyon things like that you're just going to be doing like an out and back in the desert right right <laughs> literally like, <laughs> in the, in, like deep sand <laughs> like, and it was longer these rocks yeah it, it was, was longer it was supposed to be I, yeah i don't remember the, the exact mileage was but it ended up being longer than we were and they told us the night before so you're kind of like Going to bed thinking, all right, the worst is over. Right. Tomorrow I'm going to be running through this beautiful canyon. And they were like, never mind. It's longer and it's just like straight desert. Like, just go <laughs> out and run back. And uh, that one got a little testy for us. I think we were, uh, we were. You guys weren't happy campers. Me and Debbie were. <laughs> me and Debbie were going downhill fast. But I was like, I don't want to stop moving. You're like the most encouraging person to run with because you're just like. <laughs> You just truck along. Let's go. Who cares, if, yeah. who cares if our shoes are full of sand? No, no. I think at the trail, I think at the aid station, we actually dumped out our we, did. we dumped out our shoes because they were just full of sand. Yep. Um, there were some very beautiful photos there too, mm. but our smiles were kind of fading. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then once we made it to the um, once we made it to the aid station, it was kind of like, all right, we can do it. We can finish mm. this. Uh, and my, my parents actually came on that trip. Yes. My parents have, like, been mooching off of our vacations. They came to Vermont, <laughs> they too. Did. They're like, we'll make a vacation out of that. <laughs> so they follow us, kind of. And it was encouraging to see them there. Uh, it really helps to uh, have people cheering you mm. along to just be like, finish it. Like, somebody else that's proud of you when you're, right. like, hating the world right. in the moment. Right. Um, but that was very exciting to see them and to know that they were going to be back at the finish line, too. Mm. And I still feel bad to this day. Debbie, if you're listening, I'm sorry I yelled at you. Because I was <laughs> you guys did have a losing little, my mind. You had a little fight. <laughs> I was like, at this point, like, I just, she's been my best friend for years, so I think we're over it. But it's in the book of, like, our, our fights that we've had. But, um, yeah, I felt bad because we were, like, almost to the end. I think it was, like, a half mile left. Yep. And I was, like, done. Right. Was, like, that's it. I'm not stopping anymore. Like, I can't even talk. I just need to finish this, and this weekend needs to be over. Like, three <laughs> days of running, I was, I was mentally done. And uh, Debbie was like, let's take a photo. And I was like, <laughs> no, like, we're not taking any more photos. I am done with this race. And uh, I hope you forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I did that. But it was, um, it was mentally exhausting. Right. And there were some people that... I'm amazed. Like, there was people that were passing us, like, on our way to the aid, like, to yeah. the, to the we halfway just, point, right. and they were already on their way back. Like, right. I'm so amazed at the people, like, trail running, um, to me, has been, like, a fun way to, like, get out, and I'm constantly, like, amazed at, like, what people can do. Mm. Like, there's so many people, like, in the Sasquad running community and, like, in the running community in general that are just, like, machines. Yeah. And I know I am not that, but, like, I am amazed that, like, they're very encouraging. Yes. How about that? Right. They're yeah. always, yeah. I'm definitely on, like, the fun side of things. Like, I don't want, I'm not, party I'm pace. not there for, yeah, I'm definitely the party pace. Party person. pace. Yeah. Fast horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish. <laughs> I'll be there. 
but um there for the joy along the way right? Yeah, right? yeah yeah i don't know but um yeah after that uh i got pregnant so my running kind of tanked a little bit i uh didn't think uh trail running while pregnant i'm sure there are people i know there's people that do it but i just didn't do it right personally uh -huh. Uh -huh. whatever um and then i had my son july of 2019 and um, again, I'm sure that there's a lot of women out there who get right back to things, and it took me a while, so. Yeah. I got back to work, and then, um. You went back to work pretty quickly, right? Yeah, I, I, I like, extended my maternity leave, um, towards the end of my maternity leave. I was like, can I go back to work now, <laughs> <laughs> So I was excited to go. I think I was, like, off for, like, four months or something right. like that, so I definitely got, like, a nice chunk of time, um. But I was ready to go back. But so then I was working full time with a baby, and I just every spare moment that I had, I think I was napping. Yeah, I don't think I was any motivated at all to uh, to go running. But um, I started walking again, and you even started a um, like a mommy and me class. Yes, we did yes. that for like one one summer, mm -hmm. summer fall. Yeah, I think. Um, so that kind of got me out and got me like started back again into moving like. Oh, I need to do things again. Right. Um, and and just learning like how to incorporate the things that I like and want to do um, with also taking care of somebody yeah. else. That's got to be a really hard balance. Yeah. So I definitely have given myself a lot of grace. I'm not, you know, trying to push myself in any crazy limits. I'm like, if I can do something today, like I'll yeah. do it. Like right. I try to have a plan. I've definitely started. Um, setting more time now that he's like a little bit older like definitely studying like I'm trying to learn still like how to make that time for me mm. and like the things that I want to do and like take care of my health also to take care of him so um, but yeah I started um, back up and I remember in last fall I was kind of like all right I'm ready like mentally mm -hmm. I want to just start like running again like right. I felt the itch and I was like I want to get back into it so I ended up and at that point, I had already, I think, thrown around the idea of, like, a 50K. Yes. You'd share it. You'd put it, you'd put it out there. <laughs> I started planting the seed. Once I was, like, I specifically told you because <laughs> I knew once I said it, she would, like, convince me to do it. I was, like, I'm thinking about it. And, like, at that point, I already knew, like, it's in my head. I think at first I was, like, you know what? It'd be cool, like. So I think you ran for mm -hmm. your birthday one year, right? Yeah, a couple of years do that. The, you run the name, the amount of miles for the age you're turning. Yeah, so you did that, and right. I thought it was really cool. And I was like, right. hey, that's kind of intriguing. And like, it was around 30 or something like that. And I was like, I'm going to be 30. Um, I was like, I'll, maybe I can run 30 miles for my 30th birthday. And that did not happen. Uh, I was not near ready to do that mm -hmm. at that point. And then I was like, well, a 50K different distance is 31 miles. And I was like, I'll be 31 next year. I was like, maybe yeah. I'll just do like a 50K for yep. my 31st birthday. Um, and I kind of like would tell friends here and there like that I'm thinking about it. Because like to me, like the more people that I tell, like it's kind of like you have to do it. Then. Yeah. You already told people. Yeah. Right. That accountability. Um and I've said things before, like, you know, for the 30 for 30, I was like, it never happened, mm -hmm. you know? So I was kind of like, you know what? Like, I actually want to make this happen. Right. Um, I think it would be cool. Like, I, it can be done. Like, I ran 20 miles. What's 10 more? Just like, 10 more. Yeah, 10 more Just miles. 10 more. I can do it. <laughs> so it was a very scary goal, too, but I think that that's, um, I think that's a good thing to be a little yeah. scared. But, like, knowing that you can push for it. Yeah. Uh, so I was, like, kind of in the fall of last year, 2020, I was, like, you know what? I need to start, like, training, like, mm -hmm. far out. So right. I, But I was, like, I was starting from scratch at that point, um, pretty much. So I admire the people that can just, like, pick up and, like, run four miles after not running for years. And I am not one of them. I had to, like, really start from scratch. Right, right. So I, uh, I downloaded, like, Couch to 5K, mm -hmm. just something for, like, the accountability and the time and just to get me, like, up to pace uh, a little Was bit. that hard with Carter, with your little guy? It was. So I started, um, I, a big 
part of it, I had to, well, it really helped out that I, we sold our house, me and my husband, and we ended up moving in with my parents um, last July. Mm -hmm. So it's been a few months now. And I had told my parents that I was thinking about doing the 31 for 31 and that I needed to start, you know, training. And um, I asked them for, for help because there's no way that I would have been able to do it. And I told my husband too and he kind of was like that's crazy you know like are you really gonna do that type thing right um but still supportive and like uh I was like you know I had to tell them that there were gonna be days that I might have to get a longer Mm run-in and like to watch Carter like yeah on top of watching him while I'm at work so it's extra things so there were times that I was waking up before um like my shift and just running like at like 5 a.m. just earlier just trying to get things in um here and there and couch to 5k was nice because the runs were around 30 minutes right so it wasn't really anything that you couldn't wake up early enough for uh-huh. or um i would try to get my runs in during nap time mm. i'm a big uh, nap time runner. yeah yeah <laughs> that's hey what you gotta do up. it right yeah i mean that's that's the time and or, or I would go at night after he goes goes down to for bed. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been a learning experience to try to learn how to balance, yeah, those little runs and things like that. And I would try to time out, uh, like, how long it would take me to run 31 miles. And I was like, you know what, with my pace, and then I was like, and add, like, another minute or two for Hill, like, yeah. all that stuff. I was right. like, I'm definitely going to, like... At this point in my life, I, I knew I wasn't at a point where I was going to be able to run consistently, like, the right. whole thing. And I was like, well, that's a lot less scary. Right. If you're just like, you know what, you could just run and walk it. I was like, and a lot of times that I was seeing that different races were, like, between 9 to 12 hours for cutoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, I probably do it in 9 hours. I was like, yeah, yeah I could do that. So yeah. I kind of made that, like, my personal goal. Um, I was like, if I could do it in nine hours, like bef- in within nine hours, I was like, I'd be ecstatic because yes. I knew I wasn't like top notch pacing all this, and if I was going to be hiking some of it, um, like, what's a realistic goal? Yeah, kind of. I I wasn't trying to uh, push myself crazily, but I did want to like push myself to at least complete the miles. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I started running more and more, and I got a few trail runs in. Um, I, I work every other weekend, too, so it, it was a little hard with, like, getting longer runs in here and there, so I kind of had to adjust, like, a running schedule. Uh, then in around, like, the holidays, I kind of – I uh, was running consistently through January. Yeah. And I signed up for your – what's the one in January? The Frosty. The Frosty. Yeah, frosty the Frosty Fat Sass. Fat Sass. Yep. And um, I ran, I think I did, like, nine, like, ten miles. I think I did, like, nine miles. And mm-hmm. I added a little extra. I made it ten. I, I remember thinking, like, I was like, I could have gone for 12, but, like, my foot started hurting. And I was like, I don't want to. I had, like, a lot of heel pain. Mm, I remember and I was like, I don't want to, like, push too far right now and then not be able to run at all. Right. Um, and then in my head, like, the thoughts kept coming, like, you're just trying to find an excuse to get out of it. Like, you, you <laughs> tell some more people that you're going to do it. Yes. Um, so I did rest um, my foot a little bit. Um, and then I found some, you know, support things that really helped a little bit. And from January to now, I guess I've been, like, really running sporadically, uh-huh. which isn't the best training plan, and I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it if you're going to do a 50K. <laughs> Um, but I really just became like a nap time runner. Like, yeah. As soon as I, I mean, put him down for his right. nap, like I, I would kind of run or and or walk. There were days that I'm like, I really don't have the energy. And I, I switched between day shift and night shift. So like if there was a, a night shift day that I'd wake up and feeling sluggish or anything like that, like I'd be like, just go walk. And right. um, my mom has been very supportive mm-hmm. uh, that whole time. And she's like, if I put him down for a nap and I sat down and I didn't want to do anything, she'd be like, you need to go. Go out. <laughs> she's like, even if you don't want to, like, run far or whatever, she's like, just go walk or just go right. run. Run slow. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, and also, I, when I did do the f- Couch to 5K, I ended up finishing it 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I did run my first road 5K without yes. stopping in, in the fall. Awesome. Which I was excited about. And that was another one where I was like, I kind of like psych myself out mm -hmm. and get scared for things. And I was like, oh, wait, I could just go slow. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally not doing this for a race. It's just for me. Right. Um, so to get myself to get out and to like to get going, I would just tell myself, like, just go slow. Mm. It doesn't, it literally doesn't matter. To me, I know that there's people that, like, right. they're competitive and, like, they want to, you know, always have the fastest times. And there were times where I was getting faster and I was like, wow, this feels great. Like, mm -hmm. that would be cool to, to have as another goal at another point in my life. But at this point in my life, it was just about getting out and moving. Right. And finishing. So um, I was happy to do that. And then uh, we ended up getting a house that we're going to be moving into. So like that workload has just been on us for like the past you know month or so or two months, um, just prepping for that. So the running has been hit and miss kind of like, I didn't really have a set training plan. Yep. Or I did make one, I did, <laughs> and I did not stick to it, so. I can attest that I didn't do it at all. I think I sent it to you. I, I don't know if I sent it to you, but I... This year, in our, you're in our being group flexible. text of me, you, and Debbie, I was yeah. like, I would always kind of like tell you guys what I'm thinking. And right. uh, so I, I did print out a nice plan to follow, and I did not follow it, like, at all. You were so being the longest flexible run, with your lifestyle. I you was, put it that way. Yes. Yeah. So the longest run... Oh, wait, then I... So I did the January run, and then I signed up for your race the... Squat, Squat Chapel. Chapel. Yep. I signed in up for April. the 20-miler. And I was like, I really, like, haven't been running. Right. I, like, I think the most I had probably run, like, on nap times was, like, four miles. So I was running, you know, anywhere from two to four miles sporadically throughout yep. the week. And then I just signed up for a 20-miler. And I was like, I'll see what happens. Right. Worst you could do is drop down because you, you give that option. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, I kind of took the fear of it and just being like just go and try to finish right there's like a long cutoff because there's other people that are running longer 50 miles. so yeah yeah amazing people um so i knew that even if i pretty much ended up hiking the whole thing i'd probably finish in time mm -hmm. so i wasn't too scared about that took all like the fear out of it exactly like, yeah, just go and just just wing it i'm a big uh winging it person <laughs> in my life right now just wing it <laughs> So I did. Uh, I did the twenty miler, and I actually did it faster than the Fab Apple, that, right? The Fab Apple, mm -hmm. uh, which I probably would attest to, like stopping and like a station stopping, right? Just like <laughs> cut it out. I'm, like I'm not doing that. So, and then after I did that, I was like, well, if I can just pick up and run twenty miles without. Or, or, like, finish 20 miles, not necessarily run the whole thing. But mm -hmm. I was like, if I can just pick up and do that, I was like, then maybe it's actually, like, going to happen. And I think kind of, like, in my, in my head this whole, like, time, I've been like, eh, like, I, I don't, it might not happen. But, like, if I'm only doing it for me, like, it doesn't matter if I don't do it because who cares? Right. Um, but every time, like, I brought it up to you or anything, you'd always be like, yes. Like, it's happening. It's like, happening. It's not even a question. It is definitely <laughs> happening. You once you put it out into the universe, that's, yeah, you gotta, you gotta yeah. do it. Once I involve you, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was like, after I finished the twenty mile, I was like, oh, like, I might actually have to to do this now. Like, I have to actually do thirty, like thirty one. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> like, that doesn't sound fun. Um, so. And then that, after that, like, this, that's when, like, my life got even more busy with mm. just, like, the house and everything. So I probably have run less. I did, I have been doing a lot of strength training mm -hmm. um, since January. So January leading up to the 20-miler, like, I think that was a big, big help. Right. Like, the increase in straight, strength training. So, like, I wasn't, like, just sitting on the couch doing right. nothing. But, right. Um, I think that was a big help as a supplement to the running as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, coming up to this, like coming up to my birthday, I like, just been so busy. I, I don't even know where May went. And all of a sudden I know, it was like, right? oh my God, like it's next week. Yep. I have to run 30 miles next week. Like, I'm not ready for this. 31 miles. 31 miles, yeah. <laughs> so uh, 
I think that's like the definition of winging it. Was this 50k? <laughs> um, Tell us about just, the like, the race planning that went into it. Like, yeah, how did, so how did like you I decide? said, I kind of like set a goal for myself, even though I was like, there are no goals, but like I did kind of have a goal. Yeah. Like I would love to finish it within nine hours. Like mm-hmm. if I could do that, like I'd be very happy. Um, so I, once I did the 20 miler for your Squatch Apple, I was like, I like the loops that you did. And I was like, Hey, can I steal the loops yeah. that you did? Can I use them? Uh, I was thinking about like mapping out two loops of 10 and then just doing one of them, like repeating, mm-hmm. like that was going to be my plan. And then, uh, I liked the idea that all of them looped back to the parking lot because mm-hmm. a Part of the reason that I ended up doing it on my birthday and doing it kind of solo, not like an actual race, was because uh, like COVID, I was, we were like looking at different right. ones, like traveling and some, like there was a lot of travel restrictions and things like that. And I was like, I don't really want to deal with that. Right. To take time off potentially of work. And I was yep. like, I'm off on my birthday. It'd be much nicer if I just did it then. Like, yep. Kind of just 31 for 31 on the actual day. Yes. So I was like, you know what? That'd be pretty cool. So I decided to just go for it. So I realistically gave myself, um, like, extra time. I had planned out, you know, how long each loop would take me. Right. Uh, So I ended up doing the four-mile loop, the five-and-a-half, four, seven, seven, four. Right. So that should have equaled. (laughs) We'll get to that. But it should have equaled 31. I guess... uh, I, I cut out some uh, some time. At, at each time I would go back to the parking lot, um, kind of check it off, refill my water bottle if I needed, um, anything Dude. like that. Yeah, that's why right. I was like, you know what? I like that they all loop back. That way my car is there. Anything that I need will be there. Um, and I gave myself uh, realistic, realistic time expectations for when um, I should be finishing each loop or how long each one should take me uh, with – accounting for you know hiking and stuff like that because I knew I I was definitely gonna um so I tried to like up the times (laughs) right 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 (laughs) and I knew that you had some big hills in there so I knew that those were definitely not going to be uh runnable for me at this point in life so uh definitely accounted for that and um from what people were you know I had asked a few people like I wanted to start earlier right I didn't want to be out all day because I knew if it's gonna take me an hour, nine hours, it's gonna be all day, kind of. So, uh, and it was my birthday, so I also did want to like spend time with my family, right? And <laughs> see my husband, things like that. Uh huh. Um, so, um, I told him I'd start early, you know, as early as I can, and I, I didn't really want to start like in the like dark, dark. So I was like right. five thirty, like it should be definitely like light enough yep. at that point um, to start running. So thought of like waking up even though I wake up at like 5 30 for work I was like I don't want to start (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to do that um so I had it all that was basically the the whole plan that I had I just had it like timed out and the more I like thought about it I would just like kind of psych myself up being like all right you can do this like those are realistic times just stick stick to those times and like don't really think about it Mm -hmm. um and then like the night before I was like oh yeah, like, I have to run tomorrow, so I should probably, like, pack some food. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was the night before? <laughs> it was all, it was very I wanted to good. ask you about food. I feel food. bad, like, somebody had commented and was like, I'd like to know your plan, and I was like, there was no plan. Like, <laughs> you I, had a, I you feel had like a this is, like, a lesson of what not to do <laughs> for a 50K. Yeah, like, don't be a runner like me. Stop, <laughs> stop. Um, yeah, so I... I didn't I know that about up, food. I didn't know you were... Yeah, like, I didn't really it. think about it. <laughs> I was I didn't have anything really to eat during my 20 miler and I was like you know what I really can't do that I did like right. a goo gel I was like I need to have more food than that right. and you had said I'd been texting you leading up to it and you were like you know whenever you're feeling like like sluggish or whatever you said right. just remember to eat like right. definitely have stuff and I had thought about weather options like leading up to it I was like you know what I think the like worst thing could maybe be rain Mm. And I was like, maybe if I know, like, far out that it's not going to rain, like, on Saturday, and it will on Sunday, maybe I can run on Saturday and Sunday, but, and switch it, but I didn't think about it being, like, 94 degrees out. It was hot. It was hot. Yeah. 
like the week leading up to it when like that forecast came out I was like what like out of all the days like that was it right um so um just uh what did you end up packing for your food what did you bring uh, with you I love like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches Uh which I didn't even think about too because I ran out of grape jelly and I hate (laughs) strawberry jelly (laughs) and I didn't even like I didn't I had bread. I didn't have the bread. <laughs> Anyhow, so I made, um, I brought myself, um, obviously, my water pack, and then I had um, a bunch of goo gels, mm-hmm. um, a little bit of salted caramel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then I had a few uh, protein bars, like peanut butter chocolate protein bars, mm-hmm. and then I, um, I made myself two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and, like, I usually eat, like, eggs. Uh, for breakfast, so I made myself like a little breakfast sandwich, which mm-hmm. I was too nervous to even eat at all. I ate like right. half of it, right? And uh, I was so nervous when I woke up. I was so nervous like two nights before. Yeah. And, like I kept waking up and I kept thinking, like going through it in my head of like what I had to do, like where I was gonna go. I was like, what if I forget where I'm supposed to run? But I, I had it all mapped out on Strava, like uh, the route I was gonna take. Um, and then that Saturday before, I ended up doing, like, a huge, like, painting day at my mm. the new house that we're going to be moving into. So all day I was painting, which was nice because I really didn't have a chance to even, like, think about it. Right. And I was just exhausted by the time that, like, the night was through. And I was like, oh, yeah, I should probably, like, pack, like, my stuff up for tomorrow. Right. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> I'm going to run 31 miles tomorrow. Like, I should probably make some food so I don't have to do it at 4.30 in the morning. Right. Um, so... Yeah, it was uh, kind of like a ragtag to throw it together, but um, yeah, I ended up eating like, I think I had like a goo gel and then like one protein bar. I saved everything for like the hills that I was uh-huh. walking up, so I was like, I know I'm going to be walking anyway. Right. And then um, I would just like grab, I had a peanut butter and jelly at when I finished my half marathon mm-hmm. uh, uh, distance, and then again when I hit my marathon distance, I had another one at yep. the end. Yep. Um, so yeah, that was awesome. That Ta- was well, okay. So tell us, planning. I love asking about like the psyche, the thoughts that are happening during the run. So can you, do you remember some of the things you're yeah, thinking? So like, I don't like to listen to music when I run on the trails. Um, it's probably good that I don't cause a lot of people pass me usually. So I don't okay. do coming. <laughs> um, so like when I, f- I was very nervous when I, f- in the morning mm-hmm. when I first started. I think the first four-mile loop was probably the hardest, and I was, like, nervous, like, gaggy. I was going to throw up, like, what am I doing? Um, on, on the trails for that first four miles, like, I think just in the beginning getting started, I was just like, mm. how am I going to do this? Like, right. this is ridiculous. Um, my dad actually drove with me uh, in his car to the start of the race, yeah. at the start of where I was going to go, which was really nice to have that, like, support and uh, – kind of like a send-off of somebody to to keep me on track. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that kind of calmed my nerves, like, a little bit. Right. Uh, And then going out, um, I think the whole first loop, I was just like, there's no way. There's no way. I can't do this. So self-doubt. Yeah, definitely, like, in the self-doubt. I think that was probably the darkest part for me. Right. Um, But I kept thinking to myself, like, you know what? There's, like, it's so quiet. Like, my life has just been so busy lately mm. that um, I really just liked being, like, alone yeah. in the woods. And it was still, like, a little dark. And the, there was so many birds chirping. Yeah. And it was just, like, very relaxing. It's so green, too. Yes, right? everything's green. I got all the spider webs cleared for everyone that's coming <laughs> out I forgot about the spider webs. Yeah. The springtime spider webs. Um, but any um, any part that was like a big hill that I came to I was just like you know what I'm just gonna walk Mm. it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter and then after I finished that first four um I was like oh well that's done that's four out of the way right it's it's almost done now (laughs) (laughs) um and I knew that I liked the five mile loop that you created Mm -hmm. so I was like you know what I could do this the five miler I could definitely do it I got this so uh I went you know there and that whole time I was running that loop I was kind of like I kept thinking back to the Squatch Apple yeah, and, like, comparing each loop. And I was like, oh, I think I'm running more than I did, right. like, on this stretch than I did back in April. 
Um, so a lot of times I was thinking about um, the trail and um, how I was doing in comparison to the last time I was running that specific loop, like in a race setting. And um, a lot of my thinking too was on like how the trails look so different mm. from back in April. And like um, I had been out a little bit here and there, but I think this was the first time that it was like full bloom yeah. green. Like yeah. so much green. I was right. like, these are completely different trails. Like yeah, I missed yeah. them. I haven't seen them like this in so long. So I was thinking about that a lot. Um, so at what point did your mind shift? Like, when did it shift? Because you said you, you were thinking, like, I can't do this. At what point did you, was there yeah. a moment where you're like, like, I'm going to finish? I finished, I think when I finished the five miler, I was like, okay, like, now I just have to do a four. And I was kind of dreading doing the two seven milers. Mm. Like, because then that would bring me over 20 miles. Right. And I was like, that was kind of very nervous. And I knew there were some big hills there. And I was just like. I'm not looking forward to, like, yeah. the two. Like, I kept saying, like, that was the bad half of the race. Like, right. the bad half of it is coming. Um, but once I finished um, the four, the five and a half, and the second four, I was like, this is, like, okay, I can yeah. do it. I just right. have to go do the seven. Right. Like, just seven miles. I could just do that. And then I just have to do it again. Yeah. Um, and I think when I was in the very far back of Mayapple Hill, um, in the, yeah, in the very far back end of Mayapple Hill for the first loop, I was like, I can't believe, like, I have to do this again. And there was mm. nobody out right. on the trails, at, at least on the Mayapple side. Mm -hmm. And every time, like, I got, like, a breeze, I was just like, oh, thank <laughs> you for this breeze. Like, it was so nice. And yeah. I just kept trying to focus on, like, the beautiful day that it was. Like, right. It was such a beautiful day. And the, sh and the trails were so, so um, like, shady and, yeah. like, I saw, like, a deer, and, like, there was a million birds chirping. It was just mm. such, like, a beautiful day. Right. And um, I was very happy the whole time. Yeah. Like, after that four miles, like, my – the first four that I was very nervous, like, once I kind of got the nerves out of the way, I was in a very good mood, like, the whole yeah. time. Right. Um, and Debbie called me at one point when uh, – conveniently as I was walking up like that big switchback yeah so that I was like thank you now I can just walk and I'm on the phone <laughs> um so that was very encouraging and I also kept getting like texts all day yeah my you birthday. had a lot of support yeah so um and different people like knew I was running it um so they would reach out to me too and just be like just keep going you know mm -hmm. all that and anytime I was uh just sending out updates I'd text like you and Debbie and, mm -hmm. and just be like this is where is where I'm at and uh, my other friend Jess was also keeping in touch um she was going to come finish like the last four miles with me mm -hmm. and you said you were coming back from Vermont too for that yes I had to yeah, so, I had to and then after I'd started the seven the second seven mile loop um I think once I got up like around like the Mayapple area I was like oh my god like I'm gonna finish this yes like this is it like yes. it's gonna happen like I'm almost there. And to each point, I was spot on with the times that you I You were. Yeah. Yep. So I had planned it out. And um, I think it. I planned it out to be eight hours, like, running each. Mm -hmm. it, eight hours total. I was like, you know what? If I do each loop in this amount of time, it would be eight hours. And then I told myself nine hours, depending on, you know, stopping and all of that. So, or no, I'm sorry. It was eight and a half. Yeah. So it. my whole thing was... Uh, if I ran without stopping at all, it should have been, and or hiked, um, eight and a half hours. So that's yeah. why I said if I finish by nine, like with any sort of breaks or whatever, like I would be ecstatic. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think in that back half of that seven, I was like, oh my god, that's like, where you, you this smelled the hay in the barn. <laughs> yeah. And then you called me, and you had said like I'm gonna be there at, mm -hmm. at like right around one. And that was when I was supposed to be back at the parking lot to start the mm -hmm. four, the last four miles. And um, my other friend Jessica, she also um, was planning on being there. Yep. And it was nice that I was like, I was keeping you guys updated. I was like, you know what? It, I'm on time, so like I'll be there at one. And um, you had called, and you're like, I'm like, you know, 20 minutes out or whatever right. it was. And I was like, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Like this is perfect. <laughs> um, so that was a lot of fun, and, like, knowing that you guys were waiting for me mm. down in the parking lot um, to, to, like, finish it out. Like, that was a huge, like, mental uplifting yeah, thing. Yeah, right. 
to be able to like finish strong and I, at that point like my I felt like my legs were trash like my the bottom of my feet were hurting so bad yeah. and um but I was just ready and I was the whole time like you said I was just kind of like entertaining myself like I don't know thinking about like life and work yeah, and like, yeah I don't know and I was like thinking at one point I was singing Hamilton to myself yes and, Hamilton <laughs> <laughs> um another point I for some reason like I read books with uh, Carter every night and one of them was a fly went by and I think I saw a fly and I was like <laughs> a fly went by I said oh dear and I started reciting like a fly went by and I was like I'm losing it I'm losing my mind um so yeah those are all the things that I specifically remember right like, thinking um and then when you guys were there for the, the last four um you had told me that you brought ice cream sandwiches. Yep. And like we and will Pringles. celebrate with ice cream sandwiches and you brought a cowbell and Pringles and we're like, <laughs> let's do this. Like you really turned it into a, a trail party. Um, and Jessica was also there and she was like, I'm ready. Like whether you hike or run. I was like, no matter, if, even if I run, whatever pace I do, you can, you're definitely further, better than me at running. So right. you could uh, definitely keep up with anything. Cause it was, at that point it was hot too. Mm. Um, but yeah, and then, uh, we were about to come down for the, to the finish, to the parking lot, and we realized that my GPS was not going to hit 31 <laughs> miles. I was like, <clears throat> I think like a half a mile short. Yep. It was like a half mile short. So that was a little depressing, but I'm glad that you were there because I was at a point where I was like, I can't even think. I can't like, do how, the math. I was like, how far do I run at, like, where should I go to and then turn around? So you were like, just go, we're going to run there and then we're going back. <laughs> So we had to extend the uh, the trail a little bit longer than expected, mm -hmm. but uh, it worked out. And I think with my calculations, I was supposed to. I was like, if I finish by two thirty, I'm very very happy. Right. I think I ran into the parking lot at like two thirty four. Right. So I was I was very happy with the uh, the end and the. So what did I it feel some, like when you finished? Chair waiting for me. Yes, chair. <laughs> I was like in a very good mood. I think I was just very, um, very excited that I actually did it. Mm. That I like kind of set a goal for myself and I stuck to it. And I wasn't doing it for like any reason mm. other than I just wanted to like kind of push myself. And like, again, I didn't really like push myself crazily with like. Um, I know that there's people that you know run the whole thing yeah. and things like that, but I my goal was just like to complete the miles, right? Um, something to do for myself for my birthday. Like I just wanted to do that, and um, I was just very proud of myself that yeah. I actually did it, right? Um, and to have like two of my really good friends there when I did it, like was just amazing, and uh, it was. It was very exciting. I was very I, just, happy. I loved how happy you were. You yeah. you were just, I mean, it's fun to run races yourself, but then when you get to see someone experience that, it's, like, the best. You were so yeah. happy when you finished. I don't think I could stop finished. smiling. Like, yeah. there were times when we were, like, running, and I was, like, like you could hear me, yeah. like, and not it was cool being because... happy because my feet were, I was, like, in pain at that end. Like, right. my feet hurt. I wanted to be done. Right. But, like... I wanted to be done also, like, in a good way. Like, right. I just want to finish this. Like, right. let's just be done with this and get it over with. Yeah. So I can celebrate that I did it. Yes. <laughs> and it was neat because we passed another Sasquatch runner. Yes. Al. Yeah. Right? Al Lau. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm sorry if you pronounce it low or Lau, but Al was there. Yeah. Al. <laughs> so he was there also when I, when I, when I, uh hit my 31 miles. Mm -hmm. So he had an ice cream sandwich with us to celebrate, yep. which is nice. And uh, it's awesome that there's so many people out there that are, uh, in the trail running community mm. and they all like celebrate like he doesn't know who i am but right. he was like hey that's awesome he was so yeah. happy for you right? yeah so that's so supportive to like have um that whole community around you and even i posted on the sasquatch yes. page because i was like I was like if i do it if i post this <laughs> i was like there's no backing out yeah like, i have to do it right and i was like i kind of felt stupid writing that i was like i don't know i don't really i know i'm not gonna it's not like people are doing crazy things right. and like i i have to stop comparing myself to like yeah. th these crazy like amazing not crazy amazing things um so I was like you know what I'm just gonna post it because once I do <laughs> I'm out and people were so encouraging that was the best um, and that was that. a huge like psych builder to, mm -hmm. to get out there and to actually just do it right just, just do it and like know that there was people 
that don't even know me but are you know supporting me and things like that so it was cool to do that and uh to hear all see all those responses and things like that so I loved it all right we're gonna hit we're gonna hit you with another question here so I know we're gonna go deep we're going deep (laughs) um trail running has become part of your life Mm -hmm. do you think that it's changed you in any way um I think so I think it's I, like I said, like, I wasn't raised, like, doing, like, sports and, like, being, like, competitive and, like, um, doing any sort of, like, physical things like that. And I think just, like, there was a whole good mentality about it to, like, learn how to push yourself. Mm. And like I said, I'm kind of starting in that slow phase of, like, just moving type thing and just getting out there and enjoying it. But, um I think it's amazing to kind of, sh- I kind of always, like, downplay things to myself, like, oh, like, it's not that big of a deal, but, like, it is a big, like, it's, yeah. it's awesome that I did, that I was able to push myself to do that, like, mm-hmm. knowing who I, like, knowing me, um, and I think it, it has changed me for the better, uh, just to know, like, what I'm capable of, Yeah. Um, like, um, in my own way like right. yeah I'm not out there like winning things but like yeah I went out and I I did that and I completed you know 31 miles or I'm on your own like doing these races on your own and stuff like that. self-supported yeah it's and amazing. I think it's um I think it's a lot of fun and I think it's helped me to just be more also like in like I don't have to be independent but like to be independent mm. in like um, my goals and to learn how to like set goals for yourself yeah. and to like push towards them. Yeah. Um, that's a very good thing to have. You, you should set goals for yourself. And right. I kind of wasn't really pushing myself um, to do things. And I think that's great to do. I that. love that. It's yeah. such a great answer. I don't know. <laughs> it's so good. I will ask you one more question because you were a new trail runner at one mm-hmm. time. What advice do you have? For people, maybe they're listening and they've never done trail running or they're just starting their journey, what advice would you give them? Um, I would say, like, just just start. Just start doing it. Um, there is, like, don't compare yourself to other people. Um, and instead of comparing, just, you know, congratulate that. Like, see the amazingness of it because there are so many amazing people out there. And don't, like... How to say it like because I'm very like apologetic. Like every time mm. I run with you, I'm always like, I'm sorry, I'm so slow. I'm sorry, I'm so slow. Right. I'm sorry, I'm so slow. I'm sorry, we need to stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And like, just own it, just go, just go mm. and do it. And like, if you want to walk, like I said, like every um, like uh, anytime that you uh don't feel like you can go any further, like just go slow. Just go slow and do slow it. Slow it down. <laughs> just slow it down. Well, you gotta share it. share your mantra. I know. I was gonna say. I, I, <laughs> I think around like um, mile nine is when it like popped into my head. I was just like, you know what? I don't. I like. I wasn't even halfway at that point, and I was like, if I go slow enough, I can do any distance if I just go slow enough. And it's just controlled, and I don't have to freak myself mm-hmm. out. And I just kept saying that to myself, like, it, it doesn't matter. I can go any distance if I just go slow enough. It's just for me. There's no cutoff times or anything like that. Yes. I could just go, just go finish. That's all. Love that. Tony, I love it so much. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story yeah. with us. I know I had, to, I had, to, I had to push this. you a little bit to get yeah. out here. So yeah. um, we've got fun. just a couple minutes left. So let's do a rapid fire. Oh. You're in the hot seat. I'll mm-hmm. check, see if we have any questions I here. I had coffee. Yes, you got your coffee, so let me pull up the uh, the list here. Okay, so just the first thing that comes to your mind, right? doesn't have to be a deep answer, but we always start out with the most important one, which is, do you believe in Sasquatch? Oh, he's real. Unicorns? Mm, yes. No, no. No? I don't believe it. I don't believe in unicorns. But you're firm on Squatch. Squatch is real. Okay. He might... Yeah. Yeah, he's out there. I mean, there are documentaries on it, so it has to be real, right? Big, Bigfoot hunters. <laughs> All right, you pass that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this is going to be a tough question for you, maybe. Greatest movie of all time? I know. I don't know. I'm a movie person. I know you are. <laughs> greatest movie of all time. Like, what type of movie? See, that's what I would go into it. Like, I can't. <laughs> 
being in this house, though, the first thing that popped into my mind was airplane. The airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I think me and Debbie watched the airplane. <coughs> yeah. Probably like a hundred thousand times. I we'll go know. with airplane. That's a solid I think answer. I, it's like definitely my top three. It's it's solid. Like, my top three would probably be like Gone with the Wind, Silence of the Lambs, and Ruth. Oh wait, I know. Like I am very eclectic. I mean, it might be Jaws. Oh Jaws. We're gonna need a bigger boat. We need a bigger boat for this question. I think. I'm gonna go with Jaws. I think Jaws is my favorite Final? movie. Yeah. All right. Well, here's an even harder question. What's oh, the no. What's the greatest musical of all time? I know. You can do a top three. Rapid Fire, to. Singing in the Rain. I went with it. it. I mean, you I can't, can't, you can't go wrong with that, yeah. right? If I think too much about it, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going out into all the other ones. Or The Sound of Music. I know. Yeah. Sound of Music of is top. We, all right. Well, you can say, you can say both. I love do you want to make it a top three? Do you have a third? I always grew up loving... Uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Yes. <laughs> I hope the Mike didn't pick that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, Seven no, Brides for Seven <laughs> Brothers? <laughs> um, no, let's go with Singing in the Rain and The Sound of Music. Okay, that's solid. That's solid. There's a million more. But there, there, are, have to limit it. there are so to many limit. more. <laughs> okay, next one, uh, easy one. What type of trail shoes do you like Ooh, the most? I am a Hoka convert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first time I saw a Hoka shoe, I was like, what is that? I would never <laughs> wear those, and those will break my ankles. And now I'm, everyone that I talk to, I'm like, buy Hoka. <laughs> um, yeah, Hoka. <laughs> okay, Hoka's, and how about your hydration pack? I have a Nathan. Okay. And I picked that solely on color. Teal, <laughs> and I liked it, and I said, I want that. I did no further research. <laughs> Debbie had it, and I said, I will buy the same pack as you. I'm sorry, but I like it, and I did. You did. And I love it. Done. It's very good for my needs <laughs> of being teal. All right, next one. And again, first thing that comes to your mind, what was one dispatch call that made you laugh out loud? Police dispatch call. The first thing that popped in my mind was this, <laughs> this poor lady called and she said, I think somebody tried to break into my house. You know, she's like, there's footprints leading up to my back door. I'm like, oh, this, you know, sounds kind of legit. You know, it uh-huh. could be if somebody's, like, looking in her window, things like that. Nobody was around. And it, it was in the winter, so it was snow. And so she was like, I can clearly see, like, the footprints leading up to my door. Um, so I sent the guys out there, and uh, the cop came on the radio, and he's like, you know, we'll be leaving here. He's like, those were cat footprints. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I think I laughed out loud at that one, because I was like, who doesn't know the difference between a human I guess it could be confusing. I was like, big cat? I don't know, but that poor lady, I'm sorry if you ever hear that story. Right. I don't know who it was. But well, I gave you a laugh. That was another. There are some funny ones, but. Awesome. That was a that was one of my favorites. That's a good, that's a solid one. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one is if you could pick to do any run venture anywhere, where would it be? Is there a bucket list place that you'd like to go? I feel like I probably have thought about this before, and I'm blanking on it. Where have I said? I would love to do like I did find a 50k race in like the redwoods out mm. in California, mm-hmm. and I was like, that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, I love, uh, like, the national park things that you've been doing, and, like, um, I was, what, like, running? I, if I had the opportunity to go back to Bryce, I yeah. think I would. It really was cool. so beautiful. Um, or, a, yeah, I don't know. Those good, those I would say good. those, yeah. yeah I would those say, uh, anywhere, like, in, like, a national park. Right. Any national park would be a, You can't go wrong top. with that, Yeah, right? you really can't. They're so beautiful. Awesome. All right. Mm-hmm. And last question. What is next after the 50K? Uh. <laughs> um, I honestly didn't think that I would actually complete this. So after that, I had no plans. Okay. <laughs> um, I think I would like to do an actual timed 50K. Mm. Like, an, like a, this one was just like me. Right. You know, I think I'd actually like to do a 50K race. Right. Somewhere. Um, that I don't just like wing, but I plan for a little bit more mm-hmm. and maybe get faster um, and work on, you know, maybe beating this time. Right. You know, I think that would be a, a cool goal to uh, potentially go for. Um, but I, I don't know when. I don't really have anything set yet, but uh, 
I just had to throw it I out think, there. Yeah, I know. I think that's <laughs> feeling me out. Right now, so. um, I think that would be, like, the next big goal. Right. To, uh, I'd love to do more Sasquad races as they come. Whatever mm-hmm. ones I am not working for, uh-huh. I would, I would uh, like to be at. Um, and then uh, maybe just work on upping my times a little bit, even though I do like going slow, and I'm a big uh, proponent for it, so it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, I think doing an actual 50k that I uh, have like my name on right. like a list somewhere that I'm that I'm participating in an actual right. event right. would be really cool even though I did get a really awesome medal from this one from Kim had to. at the Sasquatch had to had shop. to Squatch shop Squatch shop I can't say it <laughs> but um I love it I love that medal thank you so much for that hey you're welcome well yeah. you have officially passed the rapid fire question and the interview so (laughs) thank you so much for coming on i'm so happy i could be here this was great even though you forced me i mean a little bit a little bit (laughs) i'm happy i'm happy i could be here it's awesome i'm so glad you shared your story i know it's going to be an encouragement anybody who's watching we're going to put this on the sasquad podcast in the next week or so awesome so people are going to be able to listen to it I'm While sure. they're walking. Right, right. exactly. Yes. Yeah, just go out yep. and listen to their podcast. Exactly. That's all. So, okay, guys, thank you again for joining us tonight. We hope to see you out on the trails. If you want to learn more about Sasquatch Trail Running, again, you can find us on our website, sasquatchtrailrunning.com. We are all over social media. Facebook is Sasquatch Trail Running. Instagram is at Sasquatch Trail Runners. And if you're interested in connecting with other local runners like Tony or myself, Join our Facebook group. We now have, um, it's really grown. We have over 900 members now. Um, very supportive. It's awesome. Yeah, you can, if you have questions about trail running, it's a very welcoming group. You're going to find, uh, you'll get real answers when you ask questions, not sarcastic ones. Um, so join us there. Um, you can always reach out to me anytime my contact info is on the website. So until we see you again, keep it squatchy. Bye.